I like Edge, mostly because his name is Adam as well, but also because he was one of the most decorated and charismatic superstars of the modern era. He had great hair, mad staring eyes, and about 84 teeth. But what parts of Edge's career were rated R, and which were rated R... Oh, no. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and this is 10 Things WWE Want You To Forget About Edge. Number 10. His first title reign was rubbish. Edge has basically won all of the things. He was a 12-time tag team champion, 5-time intercontinental champion, 4-time WWE champion, 7-time world heavyweight champion, King of the Ring, Money in the Bank, Raw Rumble winner, Hall of Famer, and I think he was made Pope at one point as well. But his first taste of gold was much less memorable. WWE were at a house show in July 1999, and Edge was scheduled to face intercontinental champion Jeff Jarrett, who looks like Dog the Bounty Hunter's disappointing son. Because to Toronto is Edge's hometown, well, no, but it's close enough, it's Canada, they decided to put the belt on him. He then dropped it the very next night at Fully Loaded, back to Jeff Jarrett. His first title reign lasted less than one day and didn't exactly set the world on fire. Number 9. He fought Booker T over a shampoo commercial that didn't exist. Edge and Booker T needed a reason to fight at WrestleMania 18, so WWE creative thought about it. Well, uh, we could have Booker accuse Edge of murder and necrophilia. No, save that for Kane, save that for Kane. Okay, um... They've both got hair? Sure, why not? Cocaine for everybody. Booker T and Edge were competing for a Japanese shampoo commercial, so they decided to wrestle for it. Edge won, the commercial was imaginary, and no one spoke of it again. Number 8. He was in a Highlander movie. Considering that WWE is currently spewing movies like a diseased dolphin vomiting mackerel into a bin, you'd think it would champion its star's past endeavours, but not this one. Edge appears briefly in Highlander Endgame, playing, I think, a Scot? He basically says one thing, by deed of the king. By deed of the king. Yes, well done. And then he gets a sword pointed at his junk. Number seven, he ruined a wedding by kissing Alicia Fox. We've all been there. You're getting married to your boss, so she'll give you opportunities to win shiny belts. Makes sense. But Edge had philandering CAD written into his character's DNA after his public affair with Lita, so of course he screwed things up by putting his mouth on the face of his wedding planner. Miss Alicia Fox, you bad, bad boy. Foxy then joined the roster as a full-time wrestler. Her and Edge barely interacted, and their affair was never brought up again. Number six, he sexed a lady during a pinfall. Judging from his match at One Night Stand 2006, Edge isn't just a rated R superstar, he's a rated X sex pest. Lita, Mick Foley and Edge were facing Tommy Dreamer, Terry Funk and Beulah Dreamer, Tommy's wife. Not only was him hitting Beulah with the spear considered quite edgy, you get it, you get it, but he then proceeded to pin her like this. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't really happen anymore. No means no. Number five, his affair with Lita broke up his second marriage. Purely in a business sense, the uncomfortably public breakup of Matt Hardy and Lita spelt dollar for the WWE. Hardy and Edge, the philandering cad, had one of the hottest rivalries of 2005, and it launched the ultimate opportunist on his meteoric rise to the status of WWE's top heel. What very rarely gets mentioned is that it also ended Edge's marriage. He had been married to a woman called Lisa Ortiz for a year, and the two divorced when the affair became public. The WWE never really mentioned her side of things, whilst airing the whole mucky affair on TV because she wasn't a wrestler, so there was no money to be made. Moving on. Number four, his last match wasn't at WrestleMania 27. Eight days after WrestleMania on April the 11th, 2011, Edge shockingly announced his retirement, citing a buildup of serious neck injuries. Because of how close it was, people misremember his WrestleMania match against Alberto Del Rio as being his last, and the WWE have done little to change that as it makes for a better story. But in fact, he wrestled an untelevised match on the April 8th edition of SmackDown. Edge, Triple H, Big Show, Ray Mysterio and Christian beat the team of Alberto Del Rio and The Core after the show finished taping. Interestingly, earlier that night, Edge also speared Brodus Clay during the night's main event. Look at this and watch Edge grab his neck afterwards. Less than a week later, he was retired. Number three, him and Christian used to be brothers. Remember that? Remember that they used to be related? Well, stop it. Stop it right now. Edge and Christian were officially brothers in the WWE ever since Christian debuted to lure Edge into joining the brood. They both had long romance novel hair. They were both Canadian and that's... It. Sure, they're related. Go for it. And before you go thinking that brother was some sort of slang thing, like when Vin Diesel calls someone his brother because they also like cars, nope, they were blood related. During their feud in 2001, they kept mentioning how much Edge and Christian's parents preferred Edge. Years later, when Christian returned after a run in TNA, they became just 
good friends and the brother angle was entirely dropped. By which I mean, what brother angle? They're just friends and always have been. Number two, he was once suspended for taking steroids. During 2007, shortly after the Chris Benoit murder-suicide which was believed to be in part caused by steroid misuse, an investigation into online pharmacies was launched and a number of WWE superstars were found to be clients of a certain pharmacy called Signature of Orlando, including Shane Helms, Dave Batista, Johnny Nitro and Edge. For violating the WWE's wellness policy, Edge was suspended for 30 days, but not a lot of people remember it because the suspension occurred during a time when he was already off screen recuperating from a torn pectoral muscle, so it went largely unaddressed by the WWE, and that's how they'd like it to stay. Oops. And number one, the live sex celebration. Some families must have attended this Monday Night Raw. Just imagine what they talked about on the car ride home. Mummy, why did tonight's wrestling look like that video daddy keeps in a shoebox under his bed? Edge decided to celebrate winning the WWE title the way all Canadians celebrate things by having sex in a public forum. Everyone bought their tickets, Edge and Lita rigged up a bed in the ring, stripped, then did a sex, while everyone watched, which I guess is legal, but really feels like it shouldn't be. Despite bringing in some of the highest ratings of the year, in today's PG era, this is a sort of shenanigan that WWE is anxious to pretend never existed. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and I'll see you soon.